Welcome home, dearest Brava baby, to Do You Believe in Brava, the interview series where I, Talia Brava, personal growth leader of the next generation, meet with stars from across the spiritual, personal world to try their practices, feel their vibe, and most importantly, ask them, do you believe in Brava? In Brava. In Brava. In Brava. In Brava. Darling. So I was just introducing you badly, but I always want to give the option to also introduce yourself. So Haywood Turnip Tea Jr., you are a comedian. You are a, a man with a laugh with a laughter that lights the world up. And I know that personally. <laughs> we know each other through our sister Sarah Armour of yes. the Moon, our moon yeah. goddess queen. Our moon sister. <laughs> yeah, sister who teaches us about ourselves. And that's how we've we become so intimately connected. But this is our first one on one. Yeah. So just as an as a mahalo to the broad baby community just give us a little sense of where you are in the multiverse at this moment this strange moment what are you doing here what is your what is your why at this very strange moment oh oh wow <laughs> to uh to help her, i don't want to say it, to bring levity to to life you know, that, that's kind of, we, we fall in that line of people who find uh, humor in all things. And that is a difficult thing to be able to find humor in all things because everything, everything funny isn't a joke, as my buddy Shevick said. Oh, that's <laughs> never been more real. It's we're living in absurdist comedy and it's kind yes. of funny how living it actually can feel tragic. So it's like, let's remember, it's also absurdist comedy that's happening right now. Yes, yes. And then when you look at it, you go, okay, so how do I look at this world? and continue to enjoy myself. Well, um, folks like myself, or folks like you, folks we know, folks paying attention, we know that a sense of humor, a good sense of humor is a good defense against the universe. And the universe in and of itself is a open, wild place, right? The multiverse is even crazier. You start getting into uh, entanglements. Ha <laughs> ha! I say that. <laughs> so we are in it, we're in the middle of it, like never yeah. before. Yeah. Um, I want so so one of the things that you shared last Sunday at our little sacred mood ritual was what something you do with your children every morning. Yes. Can you share it with the community just to like open oh, like, yeah, yeah. up the floor? Oh most definitely. So it's, again, bring levity to life. Uh so we started each day with the last meditation. Uh something that I picked up on uh, my travels when I was practicing yoga, find all these different types. And it was this thing called laughter yoga. So what we do is really just sit around, um and <laughs> Just let it go. You grab onto your gut and uh, you put all your problems in uh, whatever bag you want to put them in and you just pop them out like little bubbles. You can start slowly and go, ha, 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 And it, it's true, Mahalo. It's true, like, let it go, an overflowing of, of, of laughter, like a volcano, like lava flowing out of a volcano. You just let it flow out of your being. And it may get you to that place where you get really sensitive and let things go. But if, you, if, you, if you're feeling in, in tune, it's a great way to tune into what's happening. So we'll tune in real quick and uh, see if we can sustain. We, we, we can. A good 45 seconds. Watch okay, it. Okay, great. All right, All right. <laughs>
<laughs> it's not getting good drug. It's hard to come down. But this oh, is what they say. Fine. Laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> that feels like I could kundalini for three hours. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, 45 seconds. That's all it freaking takes. Yes, also, yes. I love, okay, I need to point out the fact that when you said laughing away your problems, I was actually able to key into it because I'm like one of those people I only really laugh at like the dark weird shit. Like I don't have to laugh <laughs> if it's just funny, I don't laugh yeah. because you like kind of fucked up. Yeah. So and you're a fellow Scorpio, so I know you feel that, right? Yeah. yeah. So how have you how has laughter shown itself how has comedy shown itself to be something to move through the darkness in your life? And you can oh. start anywhere. Oh, well, I mean it's it's again it's like a it's a defense against the universe. So most of us who in this comedy, uh, who use our sense of humor to, uh, who actually use our sense of humor, I'll say that, as a sixth sense. Uh, we have this tragic backstory. So all of us okay. tend to have some kind of tragic backstory where you have to laugh at it. It's really laughing in the face of death or tragedy or yeah. something like that. It really, something happened. Um, for myself, it was my, my parents broke up. I was uh, three years old, my parents split, and life went from literally living, well, my dad, I, backstory real quick, my dad, and mom, uh, this is in the 70s, they were together. Uh, my dad started doing some things he probably shouldn't have doing, like selling drugs and whatnot. Uh, and then my mom had to leave him. So I said it to say we went from living like in this high rise place, like out in the suburbs, to living in the projects. And instantly, you know, everything changed around me. And it was my sense of humor that helped me sustain my reality. You know, yeah. it's not even about reality, because reality is going to be what it is. This is that whole thing, be in the world, but not of it. But yeah. your reality, if you, this is what I say, keep a child's heart, you know, try to keep a child like mine, try to protect your innocence and protect your heart or your being or something like that. Because if you can find that place within yourself, then even something like, uh, I couldn't say, I, I, I just watched that movie, Dr. Sleep, um, Stephen King thing, and it was, you know, a, um, a sequel to The Shining. And in The Shining, he built these rooms in his head to help him deal with the monsters of reality. And that's exactly what we do with a sense of humor, right? You, you, yeah. you unlock these doors and let people see them when you're telling your jokes. But this is where you keep your, 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 your you know, your, your monsters or, or, or demons trapped so that you can deal with your day to day. Because um, we all have to deal with our day to day. Like I said, everything funny isn't a joke. So uh, how did I how did I start doing this? Um, I just want to point, okay, point out that never more has this metaphor been so right on that we are living in literally we're being confined. And so if yeah. there's people on our facing, it's showing up like, yeah. you know, whether it's like an addiction to food or substance or anything or oh, yeah. way of thinking, like everything is showing up. And so we're realizing more than ever that our land is yeah. we actually do create the world around us and it's 90% yeah. on that. And that and, comedy is, is a lens we can choose. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's that you know, you can, you can look out. Um, Disney had this movie, what, Inside Out? And they said, uh, like, different emotions would take over in your brain, and then they would run the show. Well, if you allow that sense of humor to take over, then that runs the show. Or if you allow your sense of smell to take over, that takes over the show. So anger, fear, happiness, joy, these are all worlds, right, that yeah. exist. The that parallel we can... realities. Yeah, yeah. Like access parallel realities. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. That's a very real thing. The multiverse is very real because if you equate, if you take each emotion and take that as a feeling, it, you know, your body is the shore and these emotions bring your spirit or soul back and forth, right? So what we want to do is be in this place where we at least are helping navigate the ship. You know, this is what that poem is all about. I'm the captain of my fate, the master of my soul. <laughs> or whatever it says, master my fate, captain of my soul. Because you, do, you, you want to kind of be in charge. Um, and look at that term, in charge, right? In charge of the electricity that is in motion, which is energy in motion. That is emotion. I love that. So, you're the charge that you're choosing. Right, right. I mean, either it's either dictating to us what we're doing or we're dictating to it what we're doing. You know, you have people throughout history 
who were angry, but what did they do with their anger? Malcolm X was angry. Martin Luther King was angry. Yes. You know, uh, uh, so many different people, uh, 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 suffrage movements. And if you know that, then you go into an apathy that is like a death. Mm -hmm. But if you actually don't judge the feeling and let the feeling right. like run through you for good. Right. right. Also, I, I also feel right. um, something you're saying there that's so... Uh, um, Oh man, you know, this always happens to me. It comes to me it's all good. It'll come back if it needs to It'll come. It's a wave. It is a wave. <laughs> it is a wave. It's like, and that's it. It's really just learning how to ride the wave. And if, if we don't like the emotion that we're feeling, you know, wait it out, ride another one. You know, mm -hmm. that's the surface okay. now. <laughs> I think it's such an amazing time to be a comedian because throughout very intense times, there's a reason that like great comedians are the philosophers. It's because yeah. they can actually look at it because they have a way to look dead on at the truth mm -hmm. and not have it destroy them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you really have to look at it like that and be able to see life for what it is in order to say this is what it can be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. you have to be, admit where we are to say this is what we can be. And this is, can you turn that light on for me, please? Um, so that, uh, I think, uh, Plus, it's like when you have with this sense of humor, you do live with this duality. You do see, you're like, okay, everybody might not see that that's funny to me. And then I have to be able to explain why. And that's the bridge, you know, that's that bridge to Terabithia that and we talk about. To, too. That moment when you actually can articulate, like, I'm having this weird thought on this, and then people actually laugh. And that's when you're like, oh, wait, I'm not alone. That's, like, that's, that's all we're trying to find out. Yeah. In this whole massive place, we are trying to prove. Here's what I was once told about the, uh, the universe, right? Um, <laughs> that it's one word for us all. And isn't it amazing that we're all here together trying to figure this out? And when you take a step back and look at it, is the universe not trying to figure itself out by creating carbon copies of itself over and over and over again in everything? It's all, we're all star it's stuff. Rear view mirrors. <laughs> rear view mirrors. All, the, all the angles. You know? Them. We're all these projections, man, and, and perceptions. And it's like, okay, what is reality? And that's the duality of being physical in a physical form and having a spiritual uh, a consciousness or having some type of awareness. I shouldn't say, I don't want to limit it to spiritual consciousness because it's just awareness. And that's what a sense of humor to me is. It's that, that place where we don't exist, but we do exist because it just happens. Babies come and they smile and cry. That's all they know how to do. And that's how they communicate. And somehow we figure it out. And then they figure us out. And then we go, okay, <laughs> what's next? <laughs> and he's just trying to do it over and over and over again. That's the, that's the joke. That's the joke. <laughs> I mean, Dante wrote it, divine comedy, right? It's, it's happening over yeah. and over and over again. So it, it, it is something... Um, I don't want to say this. The beauty of com what I like about stand up is there's joy in repetition, you know, like a Prince song. There's joy in it. There's joy in performing something, try hoping to get it, what we call right. What does that mean, you know? And then at some point you transcend that and then you're sharing art. And then what does that mean? You can't spell the word heart without the word art. But as a comic, I'm also reminded that's true for the word fart. So I got to eat my beans. Yeah. It's like you can't be too fresh about anything. But also what I love about that repetition, it's like when we are able to repeat or we're able to stay in a relationship with someone or we're able to continue to wake up and do it again, we actually realize the truth that like there's infinity in the, that micro. Like yeah. you can tell the same joke and it's never the same joke. Yeah. And yeah. that's the, that's how yeah. we don't get bored and we actually yeah. get excited about it. Yeah, those are the vibes, you know? It's like, play, you know, you learn a song so you can play it, and then you learn it so you can play it the way you want. <laughs> so I want to circle back, because I interrupted your life story. So you were three years old, you had this massive shift from right. the reality you were born into, yeah. right. now God's not there, you're in right. a totally different experience of life. Right. Right. And so how does comedy come in to your life? Um, uh, my mom started working different shifts, and... When she started working the midnight shift, I started watching really like the late night comedy shows. And I really went into TV a lot, um, kind of watching a lot of TV, reading a lot of books. I went into a show, you know, it was, it was shock for like, for like a better term. You kind of like, well, what's going on? Um, so as I was reading, I remember somebody hit me to like Mad uh, Magazine. So I got hit at this time to comics, comic books, Mad Magazine. Um, 
you know, I used to watch the Muppets and Sesame Street and that kind of stuff. But then also like late night shows like uh, like uh, like Benson and Soap. Like my mom was uh, avid. Watch, we'd be up all night watching these kind of shows. And then when yeah. she started working at midnight and she'd be gone, probably like when I was 12 or 13, it was left to me to watch my younger brothers and sisters. So I'd be up at night when she was at work and I'm watching all the late night shows, the Carsons, the, it was like Carson Letterman and I did eventually Arsenio and that kind of stuff. And I didn't realize at the time that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and, and it was an escapism, right? Yeah. It's just a way to escape. And, and then at the same time, I'm feeling good. Like there's nothing, I, you, you, I'm, you know, I'm living in a neighborhood where you're worried about what's going on, but in this bubble, I, could, I was okay. If that made it makes any yeah, sense, it you does know? make sense. It, <laughs> I also think there's something to those all of being a lot of men that you were spending time with in a way. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like that that comedians sort of stepped in as like yeah. masculine figures? Uh, so I mean, I had uncles and stuff that, that probably one my my my, my, my one of, I always I have a few favorite uncles. One who was really young, and then one who was like a rock star, right? I mean, motorcycle, oh. Andrew Dice Clay, listening to guy rock music. Um, and he was really into comedy. So with him, I would watch like Comic Strip Live, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, like all these comics that you can't see, right? Unless yeah. they're on these late, late night TV. And I didn't, I guess that did kind of start molding my thinking. It really did. I mean, they talked about politics in a way that the news didn't. So when I got to school, I actually had an understanding of what was happening in these different classes. Math wasn't that way, but history and, and politics, especially like Saturday Night Live with um with like Weekend Update, I would watch that like it was like that was like my my my, my um nightline and stuff like that. I would watch that yeah, like it was CNN. Too is like is like when you watch a great comedian, like you feel true, you know. And so yeah, many politicians yeah. and new thinkers, like we intuitively are like, I don't know why I don't vibe, and it's because <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, it's you're like, looking it's at the true and so it makes sense that like the fact that our culture i mean like since the, the greeks people watch right. like the, the comedy is to like hear right. satire so it's like right. since the beginning of time we've used comedy to speak truth and like you as a young person were like tuned into like this is this resonates that was it that was the re that was like they were the people who were saying the things that i wanted to hear and most likely probably needed to hear and then with a the little slant of humor right so obviously in school I probably was, I don't know, I was a late bloomer because I was kind of, you know, into my books and bookish and I played some sports and played music, played marching band, did all that stuff, did all the things you're supposed to do. But then when I went to college, I learned my sense of humor. Um, it was playing football, talking shit on the field with the folks. And then it was like, that guy's funny. So somebody tell you that, that's just fuel. And then, you know, you, the funny yeah. person at the party, the funny person it's here. Capital. Right. It's like it's, how <laughs> This whole I mean, other yeah. life happens, right? They're like, oh, this guy isn't just, you know, he isn't just into his books and he isn't just into studying and stuff like that. This guy's fun to be around. Yeah. So then, like you said, that social capital starts happening and then it became like, okay, let's, that, that was a part of my personality. And all throughout the years, you know, you, I, you know, I kind of like, yeah, I would love to give it a shot, love to be able to figure it out, but you never know how to get into something like stand up. You never know how to get into anything unless somebody shows you the way, right? Yeah. I'm working in D.C., and I'm uh, bringing through a breakup. You know, relationship is not going well. So it's that quarter-life crisis, 29, like 27, 28, trying to figure out who I am. Do I buy a house? Do I, what do I do? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing on Earth? That type of shit. Dharma, Buddha, the whole awakening. And at this time that I'm awakening, you know, I'm talking to, you know, the universe. The universe is talking back and saying, hey, um, what do you want? You know, I can show you a sign. I walk past the sign for stand-up comedy. <laughs> the thing says, come in here. Uh, every Thursday night, we have comedians come in and tell a joke. You can win a $25 prize. I literally say to myself, and Sarah knows this place because it's Kurt Shackerford's. Uh, uh, this is how Sarah and I like Kendrick Spirits because it's Shackerford's spot, Topaz Hotel, basement hotel that was doing comedy, like New York. Yeah. You know, it's around the corner from the improv. And it's like my eyes open to this whole other world. I was like, this is here. That's there. How far is it from here to there? So I walked it, right? So... I walked it, and then I remember when I got on the stage, and I was like, that's longer than that walk. <laughs> I remember telling myself that it was longer than that walk I took. But the journey, it was that everything started clicking. They started making sense, you know? The first journey of a thousand miles began with the first step. I'm reading um, um, 
the Tao Te Ching, this is coming into my life. Uh, the Alchemist is coming into my life. All of these different things so of the awareness. Your life and your comedy have always been connected. They're always, because it's, it's, for me, it was an awareness moment and it was an awakening and it was like this world, it was like being born again. I mean, it really was. Yeah. Because this thing, my eyes were open to stuff I had not seen that were right in my reality that I was just riding past or walking past. And it was like, ding, 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 spotlight, do you want to check this out? Um, and that's why the rabbit hole analogy is so <laughs> yes. good, the rabbit hole into another world, it's right there. And you go in and you're like, this is the world that I'm supposed to thrive in. Like, it, no wonder it wasn't working out in this other world. Right. This is my world. Right, it's hilarious that you use that analogy because that's what, it, I was, it was a movie that I watched. It was like, what the bleep do we know? Down the rabbit hole. And it was all about quantum energy. And it's, it was literally about going into multi into place and coming out on the other side and seeing what happens, fourth dimension, all this stuff. So I'm in this space where I'm like, if this is not it, then I'm not in the right space. But everything that's reflecting back at me shows me that I should be here. Um, fast forward to where I am now, 15, or well not 15, 13 years later. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's I'm uh, still at it, still doing it and love doing it. And it's fun, you know? It really is. It really is fun to be able to put words together. I say at 29 when the universe gave you that sign and you discovered it, have you had moments where you're like, am I crazy? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh how of course. Do you, how do you recenter? <laughs> and yeah, because of course that's all do. But how do you recenter into this is like the path for me or just validate or, or check in with yourself? It's, 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 it's funny because when you're out here, they, they do tell you that you will get what you need along the way. You just have to take these steps. So it's constantly these leaps of faith where you go, am I in the right place? And then you say, well, at least I can jump from this place to this place. And at some point that, I don't know if you've ever seen the Matrix, but that Neo thing takes over and you realize you can fly. Some of these rules can be broken. A lot of them can be bent. And these are the rules of reality. And what does it mean to us? So it is that, you know, these every, you know, I, 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 you know, I grew up a comic book head. I'm a comic book guy. You know, all of these superheroes, uh, uh, or he's just heroes, all these heroes and sheroes, all these people have these moments of truth constantly every 12 to 18 episodes. <laughs> because who am I who think that I could go out here? Hold on. Yes. I'm going to do the show. Yes. So, <laughs> so what, you know, and that's what happens, you know, like, am I doing this okay? And then he'll come in and see me doing something and now he's got the bug. Yeah. So it's like, you also don't want to give your kids, the, I get that what that means because it's a, it's a hard place to be in, in, in constant truth. It really is. Because yeah. it doesn't allow for any, I wouldn't say it doesn't allow for any false, but it doesn't allow for any falseness. You know, faults are shown. And, and, and you know, earthquakes happen. You know, the earth has its faults. And when those fault lines rub together, earthquake happens. And you have to just remember the ripple effect and stuff like that. So that's what I try to be mindful of, that there is this, I am in this space and place. There is this power that we have been given, that we share with others. And in order to use this, I have to be responsible for it. And yeah. if I'm going to use this, then being responsible for it, just like they said to Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Now, how do, I, how do I keep that in mind and keep myself in check and not go overboard and become totalitarian? Because that's literally what it is. How do I not become the worst version of myself? How do I become the best? And what does that really mean? You yeah. know? Because sometimes if I'm not, if I'm, if my kids aren't happy with me, that means I'm putting them in the right direction. <laughs> but totally, yeah. some, sometimes if I'm not happy with them, that means I need to be paying attention. So there's this, there's this constant pushing and pulling and I, and I start learning a little bit more about magnetism and gravity and how things in the cosmos work, you know, because there is this constant push and pull Everything is constantly trying to get away from what is, but its spin is what keeps it in its orbit. So you have to spin out of control in order to be in control. And that becomes what we call knowledge of self, the chaos. Just learn how to embrace the chaos. It's going to be here. And then learn who I am. And that's the riddle of the Sphinx. Know thyself. If I know who I am and what I'm putting out, then I know how to direct and navigate my energies. And that's it. I can't say how it's going to be received yes. and I have to learn how to let go. So it really is giving and letting go. It's giving and letting go. So in, in, in essence, it's, the, it's a real lesson in reciprocity because I, I might say something that gives people a laugh and they, in return, they give me a wave of laughter. 
and now I have to give them something back. And then they have to give me some, but this is how the oceans work. And that's how music works and how waves and energy work. So at the end of that, I'm on this kick now. Where I'm trying to get out the way, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I keep really... showing up to that moment rather than <laughs> feeling like, you know, I'm not ready for that moment or whatever gets in the yeah. way of that. But knowing that, like, when we're in that reciprocity, like, we can ride that flow. We get in trouble, I think, when we pull out from it or mm -hmm. stop it or You're in a house and you have kids. Mm -hmm. um, what do you feel like when you're home? Um, what do you feel like your your calling, your purpose? Like, what is it that you are there to do with, with your family? Like, what's your role there? Um, so, I mean, it's different for everyone. Because so, from my wife, we're partners, um, but we're also friends, and we're in a contractual relationship. So we're business. I say we're business partners, but we're friends, and then we're lovers. So I'm her husband, her friend, her man, and 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 reciprocity. She's that for me, right? Yes. Um, for the kids, I have to be their dad, so I'm the uh, first image of life that they see. Uh, so I have to be some type of of example, right? Because I'm I need to be that. Um, yeah. Am I a protector? To a degree, it's not necessarily protecting them from the outside world because as as a child, as a descendant of slaves. I have to be aware that even that is not always possible, but it is a protector of happiness. Mm -hmm. And it is a way to show them that, hey, even though this, they may get into things, my kid had these issues at school earlier this year. That's, that's fine if these issues exist. Now, how you deal with them is everything. Yes. How you react to them is everything because it doesn't, these things shouldn't change who you are. And if the situation changes who you are, then, that, then that's where the problems start, right? Yeah. So it's an educator, it's an influencer, um, it's, it's a shield, I, I, a guardian. I don't like to use the term protector because it's a that. shield or a guardian. Um, and then, you know, it, it really is a, 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 um, on, a, on a very basic level, it's true clothing shelter. You provide a provider. So yes. when you are uh, 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 in, in, in responsible for that, um, uh, I was, you know, looking at something and they were talking about um, royalty, right? And how royalty has these subjects. But if real people really understood what it meant to have subjects, they would have to understand that we have to look at it like we look at subjects in school. They need to understand each individual. So the royal person is the lowest person because they have to understand every other being in their reality. Yes. And every other being in the reality doesn't have to do that. So that's like, you know, really, I want to share, I share that with them that we are given this world um, and we didn't necessarily make it, but we can help it become what we want it to be. I mean, that's that's our dharma. And that's our job. The the with power, there's responsibility and there's a sense of service as you're speaking. Exactly. Like you're exactly. the head of the family and actually exactly. the service. Exactly. 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 I, who, what I need it ain't about me no more. You know <laughs> what I need doesn't matter. Like, he, he came in, he wanted to use my phone. <laughs> yes. I understand you're on the show, but I have a need right now. Yeah. Now, I can do one or two things. I can say, this is more important than he is, or I can be what I needed when I was his age and say, hold on one second, okay, let me see if I can do both. And that's the, you know, world we, that I've tried to create for myself and for them so that they understand, you know, we are, we, 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 we do have to share our being. We do have to share ourselves with other people, you know? That's how we get this stuff changed. I, I was in these classes earlier this year where we were talking about, you know, um, going to work on and, and every, work these days, right? And how people go to work and now uh, everybody's, uh, we're all talking about equality and we were talking about bathrooms and maybe just making them just unisex, just something very simple, unisex bathrooms. That way, if you have to go, you have to go. I prefer that because if I have to go, it really doesn't matter if it's a ladies or men's restroom. I have to I go. Both. <laughs> right? So then you get people getting in all of these feelings about about where they are. And I'm like, well, let's, let's just take a minute. Is this our building? No. Okay, if this is in our building, then if people in our building feel that they can't be themselves within our building, are we being fair to them? That's where it starts. Yeah. If people feel like they cannot be their true selves, then we're not going to become our true selves and we will never get to where we want to go. This is the problem all the time when we want to make compromises. Or we want to shade certain things. There's enough, we can't do that. Yeah. I shouldn't say we can't do that. And we should really, not. It's like it's 
it's honoring the divinity of every unique like okay. we talked in the beginning we're all living in our own universes in a sense we are all in a sense gods of our, our own universe. yes and so to actually honor that in each other we can't honor it in some people and not in other people or honor it in ourselves and not in someone else and that's the multiverse to really realize that there are multiple carbon copies of this divine thing it really is we're avatars i don't care if it's the planet earth or if it's us, we're all on that cosmic level equal. Now, we may be on different scales and size, and that's beautiful, too. Yes. That's what we're supposed to figure out how to work with, in my mind. But, but also, at the same time, again, this ain't about me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah, I have to let the divine say, you know what, that's, this is what this moment is about. Yeah. So I meet people like Sarah, right? And we have fun, and we talk, and then I come on her show for a hot minute. And then I come on and meet you. And then we come on this show for a hot minute. And then who knows what's next? Because it's all these links that we can't see. That and lead. that's humility. <laughs> like, this is, this is bigger. There's many levels to this. And, this, and, uh, and if it wasn't true, I mean, I, I'd be out of this. I'd be bored, right? Like, if that's why the humility keeps us curious. Right, right, right. 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 And that's but, it. We're on a need to know basis. We are figuring this out as it goes. That's all that's all we can do. And then we go and it, and it's funny to me because somebody was we were trying to figure out and um they were talking about what God thinks. So I was like, it's funny to me that if, if we're just talking about our, our space right now that we're in. We were in like a room and God is filling this space and you're trying to comp put all this space in your mind and tell me what is being said. That's a lot to take on. I don't know how you're doing it right now. You see what I mean? The weight on your shoulders has got to be heavy. Because yeah. all I'm trying to figure out is how to get out of this room with you. That's all I'm trying to figure out. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> when these things happen, that's what, you know, my sense of humor kicks in because it is like, you know. Yes, and it's true. It's like, if we figured it all out, that's exactly what we have to laugh. I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I read like that whole book. Yeah, it's me too. I say, yes. Get that donut that's in the donut. Can you have a donut? Yes, yes, yes. And can you give me the rest of the time to finish work? This is what happens when you do work in the, in the living, well, in the, in the living space. It's so perfect, though, <laughs> because... Like, the, I think there's something so grounding about being a, a parent, you know, like you are in life, like it's, it's like, we all have all these ideas, but when you're like in a house with your family, that's when everything is actually tested and you actually have to show up. Yeah, yeah. Just, do, you, uh, do you feel like, um, what do you feel like being a father has taught you about like, being a man in the world, like being a person in the world? <laughs> I mean, I thought I knew, but I don't. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, you, you think you have it, you know, I was a certain age, and I, we had um, our first child, I was 37. So I thought I had some knowledge of the world, and I did for me. Yeah. But when that kid came, everything changed. It was just like, whoa, now this, this being is just that. It's just being. It can't do anything by itself right now. Yes. And everything we give it and share with. When that kid gets angry and I look at him, I, I know where that comes from. When that kid <laughs> is, is, is happy and having a good time, I know where that comes from. Okay. And these are all many reflections of my wife and I, right? Um, and we yeah. thought we knew who we were. <laughs> but when you see yourself back, you go, oh. It's funny. And I'm always reminded of, you know, uh, the Garden of Eden because that's probably what God was talking about when he was like, you know what? How you like them apples? <laughs> Absolutely. There is no, there is no, there is no, no. I'm like, good, I, I, I'm like, I, my heart comes out to everyone with a teenager because I feel like what happens is your kids end up being the absolute best ability to see you and point out your truth. Oh but, man, we have one of those and they. So, you already have a teenager? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he's 20, he's in his 20s now. He uh, started, he was, he, he went through, he went through his teen years. And even now in his 20s, he's still. Part of that is the leaves fall off the trees, right? In order to grow into their own. And that's where forest comes from. So you have to hope and pray. And this is where hope comes in that, you know, um, you gave them some type of direction because the wind is going to blow them and they're going to land where they're going to land. So you do hope they land safe and careful and the place where they can grow and make mistakes. Because really, man, a lot of grace to me is about mistakes. And being able to make them without the worry that they're going to haunt you forever. 
So there's <laughs> hearing the, about you as a father is that one thing is resilience, like just really instilling a resilience yeah. to be able to go forward. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is being that model of like someone who's actually does listen to themselves, listens to the signs, is in that dance of the universe and is like open to this you know, open to yeah. going for it, which is yeah. like, so many people, yeah. their, their whole emphasis on parenting is that protector and, and that you are in such a different sphere where you're so present, but you're mm. not about guarding them from becoming who they're supposed to be. No, because I'm not promised to be here tomorrow. That's the truth. And anything yeah. can happen. And when I have, when you have that mindset, you have to prepare them today for your absence. You know, and to me, that's what parenting is about more than anything else. Preparing them for your absence and being able to still feel your presence and understand that, you know what, I can go on. I can do this. I do have what I need because no one knows what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I tell them all the time, you know, that God forbid, you know, this is why we hate say God willing, you know, or, you know, universe, whatever you say, you know, we pray that willingly. We have some time together because if we don't, then you all have to carry this to the next phase and you're only going to get what we gave you. And you have to take that little bit and run with it, you know, yeah. and, some, and it's not fair. I want to back. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk back too. In the short time I've known you, like you're so present and I think that's the biggest gift you can give. As you said, that, the pause to say like, what's happening for you, my little one? That's like... <laughs> That's like the biggest gift that most of us spend our whole lives seeking. And we don't know what we're seeing. Yeah. We're just seeking that one person to see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I was, that was one of the books that I read in parenting. It was like, be what you want when you need, be what you needed when you were young. And that made a lot of sense to me. It was like, okay, what did I need? Well, like you were saying earlier, I didn't have those, I didn't have a, I had father figures, I had male figures, but I didn't have someone present every day. So okay. be as present as you can every day. Um, and then even, you know, this is part of why, you know, why we stayed, we stayed in D.C., why we didn't, why I didn't move. I was like, okay, you can figure out how to work from here if this is part of your dream. And then also at the same time, teaching them how to live a dream. You know, when I, I work in an art gallery, so I work around these, these artists, and then you find out, well, this guy did this for a living. This person did that for a living. And yeah. centuries later, we're looking at their works and going, oh, they're masters. At the time, they were just people who work every day. I know, I always watch <laughs> my, like, my, like, videos I made are going to be discovered, like, years later, and then be like, Stop, like, look, like, amazing. And that's the thing, it's, like, it's, when it comes to, like, living our artistic pursuit and, like, living that dream, like, I feel like it really is about returning to the fact that, like, in this life, it's giving me this and not, mm -hmm. like, doing it for anything external. And then, and just when you said that reciprocity, like, you can really be connecting with one person or 200 million, and, like, mm -hmm. what's the freaking difference, you know? Like, That's it. That's it. 200 million may do enjoy that day. That one may carry you another 200 million years. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. And that's, that's the part I was like, let me get out the way. Let me give them what they need and then get out the way so that they can use it how they need. And, and that's the hard part. That is the hard part because no one plans to see and, you know, don't want to see reap, the, reap what they sow, right? Yeah. But who actually plants the seed and watches it grow? You know, that's where gardeners and shepherds come in. And, and, and even in that process, what, else, what are you doing while these things are growing? So that's yeah, where my dreams it's, come it's, in. Isn't it some <laughs> quote? I just, I just found this quote. And I, like, said it in the last, like, address I made. But, like, giving away the fruits of your will. To give away the fruits of your will. Like, we're not supposed to stare at it until it's right. done. Supposed to right. Give it away. Right, right, right. I have a friend who's an artist, and he talked about it from the mindset of dying empty, like leaving it all out there on the canvas, on the, on the music track, in, in the performance, yeah. whatever it is, you know, leave it all out there. So then that comes back to parenting. That comes back to, you know, life. It's, it's hard to separate these things from life, right? Because you go, well, you know, put it all, if, if die empty, put it all out there, yeah. So then that starts happening to you on every level. Mm -hmm. And if that happens to you on every level, I don't see how you cannot change. <laughs> and exactly what you said, the, the change, the metamorphosis, the actual realization that when we give it all up and we think, well, then I'd be dead, then there's something more, you know? The limit is actually very internal. So giving it all up is an invitation to finding out what else is there. And, and how freeing is that? And that's, those are rabbit holes. All, 
all we start becoming afraid of is what we don't know. And then that's what these people talk about when they say the only thing to fear is fear itself and yada, yada, yada. You go, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's also like a control, right? Like, I feel like the thing to fear is like our need to control and know how things are going to feel at this point and at that point. We don't know. That's it. That's that's it. We don't know what we don't know. And that is what we're trying to do. Control. It it, it really is all about control. If I have some modern, if I have some hold on it then i I, you know it's it's really like when you're in a boat right and if that boat is going titanic boat is going down but they were holding on the boat is going down but they felt safe because they were holding on yeah you're going down anyway yeah yeah what what down and find out maybe there's like a mermaid grotto down there get away just get away let it happen and then I i read this one book and it was um this is a good book it's called the messiah's handbook um and it's about this guy who's a messiah, but he lives in Indiana. <laughs> and he's like, you're a messiah, but you live in Indiana? And really, it gets into we're all our own messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he tells this story about uh, um, being, a, being in a river. And he's like, the, we're, life is this river. It's this ocean. And so the rocks are at the bottom, but they, even they get smoothed out by the current. But the things that let go, those are the things that get taken to the new places and spaces. And then they become, and they were dot, dot, dot. And it was like, ah, oh, okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's. Yes. I mean, if that's the, that's the void. Yes. Fill it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and trust nature. I learned, I like, really trust nature. You know, like, yeah. if we, if we sit with ourselves, we'll know the next move. And that's just yeah. like a tree growing, you know? Yeah. But if, if we think with our little human yeah. brain, we're going to put a to-do list of how everything's going to happen. Yeah. Especially right now, we're learning that that is a complete delusion. Complete, complete. And then that's when, you know, again, that's when people start experiencing Armageddon or apocalypse, which that word just simply means, you know, the end of life as we know it. It's, yeah. you know, the end of your dream. So it's to, the reveal. So when the scales are removed from your eyes or the glasses or the blinders or what have you, and you can see the world for what it is, now the question is, what are you doing with that reality to make it better? That's, I mean, that's really it. Man. I, mean, I have to say, I really do commend you for doing the work because it is easy to be on the free fall when it's just you. When you have yeah. other beings that you care about so much, yeah. of course the temptation is there to want to control it, to want to make a, make something that protects them, but to actually live the spiritual knowledge with the challenge of loving a family on that yeah. level at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a challenge because, you know, but lo- you know the thing about love is love is real. Love is that thing that I don't say this. It's like love is to me is honest. Love does allow you to tell truths. Love does help make you and force you to be who you really are, so that you can get what you really need and really want. When we wear masks and we put on on, on airs or we put on fronts or whatever we want to call them, then we're not being fair to that other individual. And we're totally not being fair to ourselves. So if we want something, go get it. And if it, as long as it doesn't harm involving anybody else, there's probably nothing wrong with it. Yes. I mean, that's, 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 that's the reality. It's like, it's like trusting, <laughs> trusting our hearts that, like, I think people are being so careful and so afraid to, like, yeah. make the wrong move in this, like, new world that we're, yeah. like, experiencing. It's like, if you're listening to your heart, Unless you're a reptile, there's probably <laughs> a good thing in there, right? That's probably going to lead you to doing something that is yeah. coming from a good intention and is going to be yeah. received well. Yeah, and you'll find out your mistakes along the way. And because if somebody say, ow, that hurt me. And listen, you know, it does require listening to others and saying, okay, that hurt. That's saying, well, that shouldn't. Mm. Okay, I understand that because I know what hurts me. And then that's when we start. And then, you know, for myself, you know, I, I talk, about, talk about all this, right? So as I'm talking about it, what I started learning was, you know what, that's not the place to be in. It's embodying it. Because that's when you really create a ripple effect that you want to see, be the change that you want to see. So then as I create, as I started, my wife checked me on some of my, my, my biases, probably, she's doing it more often now, um, <laughs> which is good because I'm like, you know what, I didn't think about it like that. Let me take a step back and, and, and be quiet, listen, and readjust. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do it from this angle or from and this there's angle. Not, there's nothing to protect. You can do that. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. It's only, it's, yeah. It all comes down to that controlling, protecting some story about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Feel the feeling that I can, yeah. I can, and I love this. A friend of mine, Sir Cosmos, who talks about how empathy isn't, I've been through what you've been through. It's, I can feel what you're feeling. I can feel what you're feeling. I that. Yeah. And I to that. Yeah, it really does require your, us putting ourselves in other people's shoes of skin or consciousness to really get that. You know what? That person, that being was hurt. So if that being is hurt, um, then, and I contribute it, I have to not, no longer contribute to someone else's pain. Because again, if we're talking about reciprocity, it's only going to come back to me. Yes. So, and also, you know, to be excited by this, to be like, wow, I'm literally traveling multiverses by getting into this perspective. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm it, just, like, I'm, I'm staying in my yeah. universe, and this yeah. whole universe could expand by me realizing that maybe I hurt somebody. Like, that's the yeah. other side of it. Like, yeah, definitely. And it's difficult because you go, well, what about me? <laughs> and that's the part where you go, you know what? That you are helping you. Because when you start helping others, it's essentially that, that comes back and then you're not putting those back. If we don't put those bad vibes out there anymore, then they're not out there to be received. And then, then I'm not, I'm not going to get them back. And then you start creating your own bubbles. This is why they call it bubbles, because it's easy to pop. But if I, if, I, if I solidify it, then you know it's a force field and it's no longer a bubble. Or it's an atmosphere. And yes, it, it heals us and it keeps us safe. Now, don't get me wrong, we live in this atmosphere, we live on Earth, and there's an atmosphere that protects us from the, the total pains of the universe. And that's what we want to create for ourselves, something that, you know, blocks the total pains. The regular pain is that things are going to happen, we got to understand that. But, you know, those big, big impacts, unless they're meteoric or super cosmic or something that's truly unavoidable, boom, boom. And I love how you described it. Like it's kind of like the more you learn about understanding others and creating ripple effects of good, the bigger your bubble becomes. And you now have like this so much more freedom of expression and play and people who can come in and out because you know it's going to be in that reciprocity with because you've expanded. I mean, and that's, what, that's exactly what we find out when we find out artists who learn, especially the artists who uh, learn how to uh, uh, basically earn a living through their arts. We go, oh, how, how did that happen? Well, I found a, 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 I had an artist in res res residency. Then from an artist in residency, this happened. And then this happened. And then this happened. And all of a sudden, you're in this artistic space. That's all you're doing is creating. Well, it started with that first thing of saying, you know, I'm going to go do this. And then these, these, these holes, these pockets, these universes, these little other little pocket realities are out there. And you can hide in them, you know? We call them hollow earth for real, right? They look for them. They're, they're everywhere. You just, we just, I know, I, I, I know that now because I walked past so many in my life, living my life. <laughs> yeah. So, so darling, I want to hear, so I was talking about the idea of like creating providence on earth, like really seeing the world that we're creating and looking for evidence of it. What is one piece of evidence, one moment that gave you hope for the world and the future? Ooh. So it's really so... <laughs> It's funny because there's so many. Um, all right, uh, I, and it's, I mean, it's cheesy, but it's now. It, it, it's looking at my kids beginning to get along. They naturally, you know, I want, I need, that's mine. We're three months, well, I say we're four months, and we're into summer now. We've been, we spent the entire spring in the house. That was hectic because they're young. They're three, seven, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, they're three, seven, and nine. Yeah. And they all age. They were eight, six, and two. They all aged in this space. Wow. So when I say the one thing, to watch them today, we went to the grocery store. They wore their masks. They listened. They played. And when I said, that's enough, they actually listened and said, that was enough. And we were able to get through in 40 minutes. I cannot ask for anything more. I mean, for me, it's a small favor that I'm thankful for. Yes. And then I watched them hold hands to the car and get each one in the car. Now, they fussed about, hey, hurry up. But I was like, if I'm not here, they know each other. Yeah. And that happened two weeks ago. We got a flat tire. And um, I had to, like, walk away and make the phone call. And they were standing on the corner. And they were standing with their mask. And I watched them playing. And I was like, right now, they're OK. 
in all of this, and I do mean this in all of this, because they're aware of, we live in D.C., Black Lives Matter, there's the Black Lives Matter Plaza, there's our neighborhood, there was a shooting in our neighborhood during this, pan a few shootings in our neighborhood during this pandemic. My son has lost friends who he's played sports with to shootings. I mean, they know about the world, yeah. so we can't shield them from that, but they're happy. Yes. And um, I have a teacher who got hit me to the Beatles, and Jalen is one of my favorite artists, and there's a story that he tells, that, that, that's told about him. When he was talking to a teacher, they asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up, and he said, happy. And the teacher said, well, you can't be happy. And he said, well, you shouldn't be teaching. <laughs> There's that whole thing because no one can say what happiness is. And it's written into the, it's written really into the Declaration of the Independence of these people, of the people who wrote that thing. They might not have had me in mind when they wrote it, but they, do, they did write it. So I, too, now have life, liberty, and the ability to pursue happiness. Yes. That's, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a lot. To it's, be able to pursue huge. it. Yes. Freely. Yes. And they look at my kids and go, they're happy. Yes. Thank, I, I, thank God. And they're, and they're <laughs> seeing their resilience in action. Like you're seeing that they are in this world as young as they are, they're still seeing this world. They're taking it all in. And they have this, they brother, you know, they have, they have, is it it's two boys or is it a girl? Uh, two or th three boys and a girl. The oldest brother's out. So in the house, it's two boys and a girl. She's yeah. the youngest. Yeah. yeah. Like, to see that they've got each other's backs, that those relationships are going to be there forever. You know, those, yeah. that's good yeah. relationship. Yeah, and they don't. And it's funny because you know I don't live around my brothers and sisters. I live around my mom, but so they don't see that with us. So you know, to tell them about it is one thing, but to see them starting to emulate what we talk about, and they're going to these summer courses and they're starting to really get it. Um, it that's that's you know, that's what I hope for every day that they have a, a, a shot at life. And, and I think that, that's the one thing. Yes. Yeah. In the so pursuit you... of happiness, there is a, the freedom that you talked about. Like, it's a yeah. there. So we each find it in our own ways and to, like, yeah. liberate it to actually find yeah. it. That's the thing today that made me say, you know, I'm thankful. Because I had these moments where, I, and, and, and like anyone else, and I mean, uh, the hard part about being woke is taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, like I want to watch things stupid. I don't want to like think about the world. Yeah. So we had these moments, and you know, and it's always these, these those, uh, there's so many things that when I started waking up, that like, oh wow, this happened, that happened, and and I mean, like, there are things where I'm like, I can't. That I remember listening to somebody talk about spiritual transformations, and she was unable to put it in words, and now I understand what, what the, I understand that moment. Because it's like, you know what, that was just for me. That's not for anyone else to understand. So I didn't even want to share that with her, share that. But so often in life, I get pulled away from the, 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 that part of my being that I want to be in. And they snapped me back to that today. Because I wanted to say, like, you know, stop fussing. But I couldn't because they were holding hands. And they were fussing about doing something right. And I was like, you know what, take a pause. They, you know, let, let's see what happens here. And I was like, oh, OK. And I got to learn not to fuss at them so that they don't fuss at one another. This is more a lesson for me than it is for them. And I mean, and nothing gets you, no, no one's a better meditation teacher than a child because they're so <laughs> present. The moment that you're like, we're going here in 10 minutes and they don't even comprehend what 10 minutes from now means. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Oh, man. Because they don't, they don't care, man. They don't care. Yeah. It they doesn't don't matter. Care. We're the first letter, we're home. Like, we're playing. Yeah. Right? This is, what's, this is what's here. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what I like to... That's what this whole... The pandemic, the racism pandemic, the, the medical pandemic, the, the, the infectious disease, all these things. Just this time at home, this, which also could be a pandemic. You know, this time has really taught me that I'm, I'm welcome at home and home is welcome with me. And this, this has probably been another journey. That's why I'm like, I know I'm not done yet. So I'm like, okay, you got it. Now I'm like, you got to get your sleep. You got to work out. I started really getting back into losing weight and practicing yoga again and being present, not just thinking about what's my next thing, what's my next thing, really being in these moments because, you know, I was missing them. And if I'm missing them, um, I'm thankful that I have time to appreciate them uh, again so I can do it again and hopefully not miss these things. You know, I, don't, you know, I was at their, at their games, but I was coaching and I was being fussy, so I wasn't there just watching them 
being and their dad. And the last word, <laughs> remember, remember. I always think about that because it's like we know we learn these things and then we forget and then we have to remember. Yeah. And it's like yeah. we keep remembering. Can we live our lives remembering what what yeah. really matters? Who we really are. Bro, that's, that's providence, right there. Yeah. So I have one final question. I ask all my guests. It's the name of my show, so I have to ask you. Do you believe in Brava? I do believe in Brava. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me, really. This has been this has been fun. This has been fun. And you are a wonderful spirit. And yes, Brava lives, Bravo's live, Bravo, Bravo! We're Bravo. in Bravo. Here. So much love to the family. Hi, Gracie. And thank you for all the Bra babies who joined. Follow Okay, how can people get obsessed with you? They oh, uh, you and, yeah, all if, the things. If, you, if you're here on Instagram, it is at Woody C. That's a uh, at sign W O O D Y S E E D. It's the same thing on Twitter at Woody C. Uh, and then Haywood Tennessee Jr. on Facebook uh, and LinkedIn. If you do that, <laughs> my mom will find you. She's obsessed with LinkedIn. She's always. I've like, had people find me on LinkedIn. I was like, really? Okay. She's always like, <laughs> like saying it like, let's link in. I don't know if people do. <laughs> And then she'll call me. She like put a post on LinkedIn. Like she like didn't have enough likes. Like she's like so obsessed with her LinkedIn status. <laughs> my mom is on TikTok. Oh my goodness. She's like, I'm just watching. I'm like, okay. Oh my God. That's a cool mom. <laughs> she's great. She's I'm great. Not she, cool enough she's great. TikTok. She's great. And she helped me wake up years and years ago. She was the first person to introduce this, 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 this part of faith to us. Because you know we grew up Muslim, but then there was more. And then she was uh, got into what they call self help, and she was one of the first people I said, "Well, what good is a self help book written by somebody else?" And from that point on, <laughs> I love that. That's a great. Oh, it's so real. That's like the. That's like one of the main hypotheses of the whole industry. <laughs> Write your own book. Write your own book. Live it. My brother always says that. He's always like, life is going to teach you the stuff. Like, you don't have to, like, go on some retreat. It's like, live your life. You're yep. going to learn it. And if we get to pay attention, we'll, we'll be able to remember. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Thank stories. You so much for joining. So <laughs> Thank great. you for having me. Bye. Peace. <laughs>